I want to tell you five things I wish I knew before becoming a full-time music producer. I've been doing this full-time since 2021 and at the time of recording this video it's been about two years. I saw this video from LJ with the same title and I thought I should share my own experience in hopes that I can help someone somewhere in the world. So the first thing that I wish I knew is you do not need to move to a big city in order to make it. Everyone in the early stages of their career believes that the only reason why the music is not picking up is because of their location. They want to move to LA or in my case in South Africa, Johannesburg. That's the first thing I did when I got the chance. I picked up my bags and moved to Joburg. And looking back, I wish someone had set me down and explained to me that there are more struggling artists and producers in a big city than there are anywhere in the world. And if you're struggling to build an audience on the internet, you're going to struggle just as much, if not more, in person. And more often than not, people who'd be willing to pick up their bags and just move to a different city to pursue a music career don't have enough money to get their own apartment, let alone a decent one. I've seen so many messed up situations where it's like six guys sharing the same apartment and they're all trying to make it. And all they do is just make noise and smoke weed the whole day because they think that's the lifestyle. It's not. It's not 2006 anymore so you can start where you are and just build an audience on the internet. The second thing I wish I knew is there's so many ways to make money as a music producer. But again, I didn't know that. I thought that in order to make money as a music producer, I needed to like be this huge famous producer, kind of like Metro Booming, but I was making dance music. So maybe like DJ Snake or the Chainsmokers. I don't know, but I just thought that I needed to be huge or at least produce for huge artists. So that was my plan when I started making videos on the internet. I just thought that I was gonna make videos and show these people just how talented I am. And then these big artists will see me and they'll ask me to produce for them. And then I'm gonna become famous and make money that was my plan but what actually happened was i posted these videos and i grew an audience of music lovers and other music producers and djs and when that happens what you become is a content creator or influencer which is a term i hate so much anyway so i started making money from my content and then eventually the sponsorships came in and then now i'm at a point where i don't even produce for other artists or put out music as often and i'm able to have a career in music without doing any of the things that i thought i'd be doing and this does not even begin to scratch the surface when it comes to making money as a music producer i'm sure there's a video that you can find on the internet that goes into more detail about this then the third thing i wish i knew kind of ties in with the previous one and that is you you cannot have a music career in 2023 without creating content. I'm not gonna get too deep into it because I'm sure by now you've heard it like a million times, but content creation is the way. And then number four is there comes a time where you need to transition from being a hobbyist to being a business. So you stop thinking like a producer who just wants to have fun and start thinking like a business owner. A hobbyist just wants to make beats, have fun and call it a day while a business gives the people what they want and makes money. There's a reason why some of the biggest stars in the world will hop on multiple genres from time to time. Even when we know that this person is primarily a rapper, they'll do a dance track or do a track that's obviously made for TikTok virality. All right, for, uh, left for slide. You don't have to lose your identity or sell your soul, but do hop on a trend if there is one. Ali Abdal explained this in a way that made so much sense to me and you should watch his videos when you get the chance, he's, he's amazing. But basically what he said was, imagine having a supermarket and selling what you as the owner likes only. So if you like Cheetos, then that means that the whole store is filled with Cheetos and nothing else. There are businesses that have the privilege of operating like this, but for the majority of us, we simply cannot. So you need to research the community and the competition and see what the people want and give it to them. In the context of music, you need to think about the Spotify algorithm, the TikTok algorithm, and just social media in general. And if there's a trend to hop on, just give the people what they want. And the last thing that I wish I knew is the equipment that you use does not matter as much as you think it does. If you're good, you're good. And if you're bad, a shiny new keyboard is not gonna fix the issue. There's this one thing that I do, and at first I thought I was the only one, but after talking to my other producer friends and just watching producers on the internet, I know that I'm not alone. So almost all of us don't use the equipment that we have when we're actually zoned in into a session. When we're making music, we don't use any of the equipment. It's just a laptop and a pair of speakers or headphones, and that's it. But when it comes to making a video for TikTok or YouTube or whatever, that's when we put out the MIDI controllers and we play the melodies and stuff. But other than that, it's just the mouse and keyboard and that's it. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying any of those stuff is useless, but you don't necessarily need it to make a song. 
It's the same with videos. You don't need a shiny new camera. You can just pick up your phone and start recording videos and bam, you have content. So check out my video on the top five studio monitors. Click here and I'll see you there. Peace.